The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com, where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. This is a much better representation of what I've been talking about. Now, in the previous slide, I, you know, talked a lot. This explains or this illustrates what I was talking about. So the first stage which we talked about clearly was digestion. That's stage one right here. And in digestion, these large macromolecules, in the case uh, of sugars, these polysaccharides, are broken down into simple sugars. Those simple sugars then enter the cell, as you can see, that's a picture of a cell we have right there in gray. And inside the cell, those simple sugars like glucose right here are then actually converted into pyruvate and the process is glycolysis, which is what we are studying today. So the process that actually converts those glucose molecules into pyruvate is referred to as glycolysis. And remember, like I said, glycolysis results in the production of some ATP right here. So we call that substrate level phosphorylation. It's a production of ATP strictly from uh, those degradation process or those degradation steps of the substrate. And we also produce some NADH, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide dehydrogenase. Now, the pyruvate molecule then proceeds into another structure which we call our mitochondria. You should know what a mitochondrion is. If you don't, that's, that's pretty much just sad. Go back and, you know, just go back and read something. So, this structure in blue right there is what is our mitochondria and take note of the fact that it's double there's two membranes right there so as you can see there's one membrane right there and then there's another membrane right there so that's the mitochondrial membrane and that's important because the electron actually transfer chain occurs between those two membranes in that intermembrane space that electron transfer chain that we were talking about it happens inside this space right here okay so back to acetyl coenzyme A. So the pyruvate formed from glucose is then converted into acetyl coenzyme A. And that's the stage two of that process. And that's what we refer to as glycolysis. So glycolysis is actually a Greek word. Okay, so glyco meaning sugar, lysis meaning breakdown. So it's actually derived from a Greek word and that's what stage two of the process entails. So it's pretty much this process right here between the formation uh, of glucose, so the glucose entering into the cell to its breakdown and conversion to acetyl coenzyme A. So it begins in the cytosol on the cytosolic interface and ends inside the mitochondria as acetyl coenzyme A is made available to the citric acid cycle. So that's stage two right there. Now in the third and final stage what we have is these two processes, these two main processes. The first one being the citric acid cycle and the second one being what is referred to as oxidative phosphorylation using the electron transport chain. So basically what happens in the third stage is the acetyl coenzyme A that we produced uh, from glycolysis is then fed into the citric acid cycle which results in the formation of NADH. Now NADH is a really really important molecule in this case it's what is fed into the electron transport chain to actually produce massive loads of energy and water and carbon dioxide as waste products. So take note of this. And I want you to point out a few things as we're talking about these three stages. So we've talked about digestion, we've talked about glycolysis, and we've talked about the last and final stage that actually happens inside the mitochondria, which is the breakdown of acetyl coenzyme A and ATP formation. So the citric acid cycle and oxidative, pho oxidative phosphorylation in the electron transport chain. That is stage three. So I'm just going to write that down for you guys. The citric acid cycle plus oxidative phosphorylation. So what we're concerning ourselves with in this lecture is basically only the process of glycolysis. Stage two right there. Now, note a few important things. When we are forming a pyruvate or that process that results in formation of acetyl coenzyme A, we do produce some waste products. One of those is carbon dioxide, as you can see right here. That's carbon dioxide. It's produced. 
the citric acid cycle also produces its carbon dioxide. Take note of another thing. We produce some NADH in glycolysis, which is fed right into that electron transfer chain as well. We also produce some NADH when we're converting pyruvate to acetylcholinezyme A. That's also fed into that electron transfer chain, into the process of oxidative phosphorylation. So what I want you guys to take note of in this case is that you have waste products and you also have substrates or products of interest like ATP being formed at multiple stages of this process. So it's not that all the ATP is formed in the end, although most of it is formed in the end, which is stage three, some of it is formed before that as well. Similarly, some waste products like carbon dioxide uh, are formed earlier on in the process. So what we have on the screen right here is just basically something that breaks down the entire process for you. So you can see right there, we have digestion happening, which breaks down those sugars into smaller manageable units like glucose. Glucose finds its way into the cell. It undergoes glycolysis, which converts it into a pyruvate molecule, which is then converted into acetylcholine A, which is fed into the citric acid cycle. That produces massive amounts of NADH, a powerful reducing molecule, which is then fed into uh, the process of oxidative phosphorylation inside the inner mitochondrial membrane, between those membranes. And what that actually happens, what happens in that case is um, a, a series of enzymes. Enzyme-controlled reactions will couple the release of energy from electron transport to the formation of ATP. That should make sense. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep talking about it. If you're not, you know, grabbing onto it right now, you will in a few slides. So.